Yeah. Good evening, all. This is Sindra from Pantaki Learning. Am I audible? Are you able to hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Good evening, all. Rupa, good evening. Shashank, good evening. Arvil Ran, good evening. Divya, good evening. Abhiram, hi. Yeah. Good evening, all. I warmly welcome you all to my session. Today is uh, second day of this 21 embedded system Arduino's master class, right? Yeah. Yeah, Jitin, good evening. Manish. Yeah, thank you all for a response. Okay. So, shall we start the session now? Are you all ready? Today we are going to talk about introduction to Arduino. Yeah. Okay. So, before uh, getting into Arduino, I just want to say something which is like, see, in early days, People used simple switches for what? To just uh, turning on a bulb. Like uh, if you click a switch and then the bulb is on. Right. After that, uh, they are invented like relays. Relays are invented after that only. And then engineers use triple five timer circuits. So in order to turn on lights on some specific time they use triple five timer circuits but the triple five timer circuits are quite big in size so finally engineers uh, discovered microcontrollers in which there are uh, simple output and input pins so now if you want to turn on light at some certain time then you just simply plug the bulb on uh, output pin of the microcontroller and then you get uh, started with some programming and you can add a timer to automatically turn on the bulb. So see the benefit of microcontroller is the circuit is just quite simple and small in size. So moreover it's flexible actually suppose you want to change the time of like turning on bulb then you want to uh, what you need to do is that you just need to simply change the code and it will be changed but in triple five timer circuits you need to change the components. So now we know the use of microcontroller and also their benefit in yesterday's session itself right. So now let's talk about Arduino. So what is Arduino? Give me a simple one line answer. What is Arduino. For your understanding, what is Arduino? Just drop me the single one line answer, okay? What is Arduino? What is the purpose of Arduino? Why we use that? Why Arduino? Microcontroller, okay. What is Arduino? I am asking, what is Arduino? Arduino is a microcontroller. Yeah. 16 bit pins. You are talking about that Arduino board. Okay, it's also right. It's a system. Okay. Apart from microcontroller, micro, some. Okay. So, wait, let's see. What is Arduino? See, it is a open source hardware and software platform which is used to design and build electronic projects like it consists in IDE which means integrated development environment. It has its own IDE for free. That's why we called it as open source hardware and software platform. So where one can write and run the programs and these programs are known as sketch in Arduino and a microcontroller. So first what does Arduino do? So the Arduino hardware and software were designed for who? Artists, designers, hobbyists, hackers, newbies and anyone interested in creating interactive objects or environments. 
So Arduino can interact with buttons, LEDs, motors, speakers, GPS units, cameras, internet, even your smartphone or your TV. So this flexibility combined with the fact that the Arduino software is for free. The hardware boards are pretty cheap and both the software and hardware are easy to learn. So many of you have dropped the correct answers actually. Okay. Okay. So see. So Arduino is nothing but a simple microcontroller board. In microcontrollers like uh, PIC or Atmel, suppose you want to work on PIC in the sense, then you have to first design a basic circuit. Also, you need to design a power circuit to supply power to it. And after that, in order to upload the code in it, you have to buy a programmer as well. So, first of all, all you need to write the code for PIC microcontroller. And after that, you need to upload code into uh, using a programmer. And then you have to place that PIC microcontroller back into the circuit and you have to test. Which is quite lengthy and also got hectic, right? When you are working on some project because you have to test uh, code again and again, right? But in Arduino, it has built-in programmer and the basic circuit in it. So, what you need to do is, simply you can just plug in Arduino with your computer using USB cable and get it software and you can start uploading, also start testing. So, you don't need to plug, unplug or do anything. Simply, you just upload the code and test. Moreover, it also has some uh, efficient tools, very efficient tools using which you can test your output as well as uh, quite easily. So, Arduino board also has the pins on which you can simply plug your devices and can turn them on or off. So, another advantage of Arduino is that because of its popularity, all the electronic components also have the Arduino libraries which are free and you can use them. So, you can operate that electronic component quite easily with Arduino. Right, and hence it developing day by day. So now let's see the next slide is about applications. So see, Arduino is very easy to use for embedded system applications because of Arduino open source software availability. And those who don't have skills in programming and but still want to work on embedded system project, they can easily use Arduino for their embedded system based project developments. One should only have idea about basics of electronics like how to use resistor, capacitor, transistor, diode and like other basic electronic components to just get started with Arduino. And you have just uh, have the basic knowledge of a C or C++ programming. That's it. So now let's talk about this application. So first smart home. See with Arduino boards, we can control the home activities with the control system like such as uh, motion sensors, outlet control, temperature sensors, door control, airflow control like that. And then traffic signal control. So Arduino is used for the control of traffic lights. It can also be used for the real time control system with uh, programmable things, pedestrian lighting etc. So, in traffic control system, the junction timing adjusts automatically. For what? To accommodate a movement of vehicle smoothly. For avoid, avoiding waiting time at junction. And then there is a thing called medical. So, see an Arduino based heartbeat monitor counts the number of heartbeats in a minute. In this, a heartbeat sensor module is attached that senses the heartbeat upon putting a finger on this uh, sensor. And also, Arduino is used for designing many medical equipment such as customizable breathalyzer, like little automatic slipper foot massager, and open source EEG, ECG like that, and thermometer, Wi-Fi body scale with Arduino board, etc. There's a lot of things. 
and at last laboratory so in laboratory for the designing and learning circuit designing arduino provides a useful platform so there may be chances of some damages or any something uh, wrong by the beginners and it may also be costly for the students to use new electronic parts so in this arduino simulator offers a solution to all these problems no damage done to a computer no money spends on hardware faster circuit prototyping and no mess with all that uh, cabling things at all so arduino based automated slide movement microscope is very cost effective laboratory device so this is all about the applications of arduino now let's see yes so the first thing is arduino ide uses a simplified version of c++ it make it easier to learn programming and second thing the hardware and software platform is easy to use and implement so as i told earlier you just need to know only about basics of electronics and basics of c programming or c++ programming just to start with arduino and coming to this third thing the arduino ide is used to do control the functions of boards it further sends the set of specifications to the microcontroller which means you can control your board functions by sending a set of instructions to the microcontroller on the board uh, just by using arduino ide and the fourth point is arduino does not need an extra board or piece of uh, any piece of uh, board to load a new code i'm talking about like programmer so unlike most previous programmable circuit boards arduino doesn't need an extra piece of hardware which is nothing but a programmer in order to load a new code into the board you can just simply use a usb cable to upload your code into your microcontroller and the last point is arduino can read analog and digital input signals so it is able to read analog and digital input signals from different sensors and it uh, turn into an output such as like activating a motor like uh, turning on led or turning off led connecting to the cloud and many other actions you will get to know in the later sessions okay so now now let's talk about the different types of arduino boards let's see one by one before that let me tell you something so see various kinds of arduino boards are available actually depending on different microcontrollers are used depending on uh, depending upon our project depending upon our requ requirement depending upon our need so however all arduino boards have one thing in common they are programmed through the same arduino ide you don't need to go for different ides for different board whatever may be the board which is based on the arduino family you can just go for the single thing which is called arduino ide so the various components present on the arduino boards are like microcontroller digital input output pins usb interface and like uh, connector analog pin reset pin power button leds crystal oscillator voltage regulator like these things which are all present in arduino boards so some components may differ depending on the type of board some board may have some components some board may doesn't have some components so some boards are designed to be embedded and have no programming interface which means hardware which you would need to buy separately so some can run directly from 3. Uh, something old battery like 3.3 or 3.7 old battery but some other need at least 5 volt so the most standard and popular board used over time is this one arduino uno in this master class we are going to use this board only arduino uno board which name is the microcontroller's name is atmega 328 microcontroller which is present on the uno board it makes it rather powerful than other boards So there are various type of Arduino boards which is used for uh, different purpose and projects. 
So the Arduino boards are organized using the Arduino IDE which can run on various platforms. Let us discuss some common and best Arduino boards. So the first one is Arduino Uno. So see, the Uno is a great choice for your first Arduino, like beginners. It has got everything you need to get started with and nothing you don't. It has 14 digital input output pins. Of uh, which of six pins can be used as pulse width modulation output pins, and it has six analog inputs. It has USB connection, power jack, reset button, and more. It contains everything needed to support the microcontroller. You can just simply connect it to your computer using a USB cable, and you can power it with uh, AC to DC adapter, or you can power it with a battery to get started with. And then there is a thing called Lillipad Arduino. So the Arduino was initially created for wearable projects like an e-textiles. So it is based on Atmega 168 microcontroller. So the functionality of Lillipad is the same as other Arduino boards. It is round shape, light weighted with a minimal number of uh, components to keep the uh, size of board small. So each lily pad was creatively designed with large connecting pads and a flat bag to allow them to be uh, seen in clothing like with conductive thread. So the lily pad also has its own family of input, output, power and sensor boards that are also built speci uh, specifically for e-textiles. They are even washable. And then there is a thing called third one is Arduino Mega. So Arduino Mega, this is like Uno's big brother actually. It has a lot of a uh, lot of uh, pins. Like it has fifty four digital input output pins, in which of fourteen can be used as pulse width modulation uh, pins, and it has sixteen analog input pins, USB connection, power jack, and reset button, and so on. So it contains everything needed to support the microcontroller and simply connect it to a computer with a USB cable or you can power it with the same thing AC to DC adapter or battery. So the large number of pins make this board very handy for projects that require a bunch of digital inputs or outputs like lot of LEDs, lot of buttons like that. Then fourth one is Arduino Nano. It's smaller in size actually. So the Arduino Nano is a small Arduino board which is based on like um, Atmega 328P or something Atmega uh, 628 something microcontroller. So the connectivity is the same as the Arduino Uno board. So the Nano mode is defined as a sustainable like small like consistent and flexible microcontroller board. It is just small in size compared to Uno board. So the devices required to start our projects using Arduino Nano board are Arduino ID and Mini USB. And then this is called Arduino Leonardo. So this is Arduino's first development board to use one microcontroller with built-in USB. So this means that it can be cheaper and simpler. Also because the board is handling USB directly, code libraries are available which allow the board to uh, emulate a computer keyboard, mouse and, and more. And coming to this, this is Arduino robot. So this is called a tiny computer. It is uh, widely used in uh, robotics actually. The board comprises of the speaker. A 5 button, color screen, 2 motors, SD card reader, digital compass, 2 potentiometers, 5 floor sensors and so on. So the robot library can be used to control the actuators and the, as well as the sensors. I will clear your queries. So many of you asking so many questions. I will uh, explain it all the boards and then I will come to you. Okay. So please wait for the remaining two boards. I will come to you. Okay. Now this board. This is Arduino Zero. So this is generally called as the 
32 bit extension of the arduino uno it is based on atmos i think sam uh, 21 microcontroller it consists of six analog pin input 14 uh, digital input and output pins like usb connector power jack icsp pins ur pins power header analog reference button so the embedded debugger of atmel is also supported by the arduino zero actually so the function of debugger is to provide a full debug interface which doesn't require additional hardware so now at last arduino shield so the arduino shields or the boards which can be plugged on the top of the pcb see the single board is different from the uh, remaining other boards right so the shield further extend the potential of the pcbs and uh, provide additional capabilities like uh, say controlling motors controlling uh, like connecting to the internet providing cellular like other wireless communications controlling an lcd and much more the production of a shield is actually cheap it's also very easy to use there are various types of arduino shield that can be used for different purpose for example like have you heard about xb shield the XP shield can be used for wireless communication between multiple Arduino boards over distance up to like I think something like 300 feet using the Zigbee module. So but in the in the this entire session we are going to use Arduino Uno R3 board. So let's see about the particular board descriptions everything under okay. So before that. Let me clear all your doubts. Okay. Some of you are asking about the uh, uh, certificate, right? See, the master class is only for free. The master class is only free. You have to pay for that certificate. You have to pay for that participation certificate. It, I think it's uh, like 110 or something. So you have to pay for the certificate but this entire master class is free and you have to attend all the classes and you have to put all the attendance then only you will get your certificate. You should join every day's class. You should give attendance in everyday basis then only you will get your certificate. So please try to be active in the class. Don't repeatedly ask for the attendance again and again. They will post the attendance link at the end of the session. Please don't ask your attendance in between the class. Every day they will provide you the attendance in the end of the session only. So you have to wait until end of the session. Don't disturb the remaining people who are actually listening. Okay, some of you tell me to uh, this one, right? Wait. This board, okay. So this is a lily pad Arduino. This is actually created for wearable projects like uh, you know right wearable projects. It is based on Atmega 168 microcontroller. It also acts as the remaining Arduino boards. It is round in shape. This is a lightweight board with a, it only have minimal number of components just to keep this Arduino board in smaller in size. That's why they uh, they just providing the minimal number of uh, pins, minimal number of components, everything. Okay, so now shall we move to the next thing, which is board description. Let me clear you with all the board names first. See. This is first one is Arduino Uno. The board itself you can get to uh, you can get to know the name. See Arduino Uno. This is Lily Pad Arduino and this is Arduino Mega. See the name is here. And this is smaller in size. That's why they named uh, this board as Arduino Nano. And this is Arduino Leonardo. And this is Arduino Robot. And this is Arduino Zero. And this is the last one is Arduino Shield. Is it clear? Are you able to find the board names now? 
the name uh, written itself in the board you can get you know leonardo mega nano shield zero this is lily pad and this is arduino robot okay so now let's move to the next one which is okay so see this is the right time to convert this master class into a certified internship let me tell you about this entire internship this one month internship on embedded systems arduino you will get 90 days access to complete records of the session you can get 30 days of internship certificate the you can download 30 days of class presentation files and you will get 8 plus project source code for download and for every week you will have mastermind session you can interact with your mentor you will clear your doubts you can ask your queries and there is a, a specific group for all those internship members and you will get access to panta community and also career guidance session And there are some projects which are included in this internship which are soil moisture control, smart street light monitoring, water quality monitoring, smart parking using Arduino, health monitoring, smart circuit breaker using Arduino, ATM security using Arduino, vehicle speed controller and surveillance system using Arduino. And this is just only for 699. Use this link to make your payment. And this is for just one month internship on embedded systems on Arduino. And see this is for three month internship on embedded systems. The lineups are Arduino, Raspberry Pi, Internet of Things and as well as PCP design. This is only for 1 to 99. Make this chance make this chance and get your three month internship on this embedded system and this three month internship on embedded system is about you will get 360 days at complete records of the session you will get three month internship certificate plus three individual certificate you can download all the presentation files you will get 18 plus project source code for download and for every week you will have mastermind session you can interact with your mentor you will uh, you can clear your queries with your mentor and there is a specific group for all those internship members and you will get access to pantech community and also you will get career guidance session as well and this is only for 1299 use this link to make a payment Okay, so now let's get back to the topic which is Arduino Uno board description. The master class is only for free. You have to pay for participation certificate which is 118. Okay, so see. The Arduino Uno is a standard board of Arduino. I have already told this, right? Here, Uno means one in Italian. It was named as Uno just to label the first release of Arduino software. It was also the first USB board released by Arduino. It is considered as the powerful board used in various projects Arduino.cc which is developed the Arduino Uno board actually. So Arduino Uno is based on Atmega 328P microcontroller. It is easy to use compared to all other boards such as Arduino Mega, Nano, Leonardo etc. The board consists of digital and analog input output pins, shield and other circuits. So the Arduino Uno include 6 analog pins, 14 digital pins, USB connector, power jack, ICSP pin. It is programmed based on IDE, which stands for Integrated Development Environment. It can run on both online and offline platform. The IDE is common to all available boards of Arduino. So now I will explain one by one briefly. So first one is the main thing. 
Atmega 328 microcontroller. This chip. So each Arduino board has its own microcontroller. You can assume it as the brain of your board. So the main IC, I mean integrated circuit on the Arduino is slightly different from one board to another board. So the microcontrollers are usually of the Atmel company. You must know what IC your board has before loading up a new program from the Arduino IDE. You can get the no, uh, name from the top of the microcontroller. Every microcontroller has its own name on the top of the board. So this information is available on the top of your IC. So the processor code inside, inside it is 8 bit. It combines memory, I mean static RAM, EEPROM and flash. It also has ADC, SPI serial ports, input output lines, registers, timer, external and uh, internal interrupts and as well as oscillator. Then ICSP pin. What is ICSP pin? Mostly ICSP pin is an AR. Like a tiny programming header for the Arduino consisting of MOSI, MESO, CLOCK, RESET, POWER and GROUND. You will get to know what is MOSI and what is MESO, what is CLOCK PIN, what is DATA PIN, everything in later session. When we talk about the communication protocol, when we talk about the particular thing which is called SPI, in that session you will get to know uh, clear detail about these MOSI, MESO PINs. Okay? So now I just uh, give you the introduction about all these things. We will see each and everything clearly in later sessions when we talk about that particular topic. Okay? Actually you are slaving the output device to the master. There is a thing called master and slave uh, communication which we all going to talk about in communication protocol sessions. So now power LED indicator. So this LED should light up when you plug your Arduino into a power source just to indicating that your board is powered up correctly. If this light doesn't turn on, then there is something wrong with the connection. Called digital input output pin. So, the Arduino Uno board has 14 digital input output pins from 0 to 13. Of which 6 provides pulse width modulation. You can see the tilde symbol here, right? So, these are depending on pulse width modulation. The pin number 3. 5, 6, 9, 10, 11. You can also use this as digital input output pins and you can also use this as pulse width modulation pin. Just, just this 6 pins. So these pins can be configured to work as input digital pin. To read the logical values like zeros and ones like uh, or a digital output pin to drive different modules like LEDs, relays, etc. So the pin is labeled as tilde here. You can see uh, here. And then TX or X LEDs. On your board you will find two label. One is TX, another one is RX. So they appear in two places on the Arduino Uno board. First at the digital uh, pin like 0, 1. Here 0 is RX, 1 is TX which means receiver pin transmitter pin. So second thing is here TX and RX LED. So the TX LED flashes with different speed while sending serial data and the speed of the flashing depends on the baud register used by the board and RX flashes during the receiving process. Using that you will get to know it's receiving or transmitting. And then ARF which means analog reference pin. This pin is used to feed voltage to the Arduino Uno board from the external power supply. So most of the time you can leave this pin alone. It is sometimes used to set external reference voltage between like a 0 volt and 5 volt as the upper limit for an analog input. Most of the time we don't use this pin. You just power it up with USB cable. And then reset button. You can reset your Arduino board which means you can start your program from the beginning. You can reset the Uno board in two ways. First one is by using the reset button on the board. Second, you can connect an external reset button to the Arduino, 
uh, pin labeled as reset here using this and then power USB. So Arduino board can be powered by using the USB cable from your computer. All you need to do is that you can connect the USB cable to the USB connection. It is essential for the programming of the Arduino Uno board. And then crystal oscillator. So the crystal oscillator helps Arduino in dealing with timing issues. How does Arduino calculate time? The answer is by using the crystal oscillator. So the number which is printed on the top of the board. Here we can't see this properly. So Arduino you know crystal oscillator is 16 megahertz. And coming to voltage regulator. The function of voltage regulator is to control the voltage given to the Arduino board and stabilize the DC voltages which is used to the processor and other elements. And here power button, I mean barrel jack. So this can be powered directly from the AC mains power supply by connecting it to the barrel jack. And then analog pin. Here these are the 3.3 volt pin, 5 volt pin, ground pin. And here comes analog pins. So the pin number from A0 to A5 are analog pins. The function of this pin is to read analog sensor used in the connection. It can also act as GPIO. GPIO means general purpose input output pin. Okay. And then these are ground pin, power pin, everything. So this V in pin also can be used to power the Arduino board from external power source like AC main power supply. Now let's talk about the next thing which is Arduino Uno board pin description. So first let's talk about this analog pins. So see analog Uno offers you six analog channels. The left side of the board has all these analog pins together starting from A0 to A5. And they come up with the resolution of, see, 10 bits, which mean 2 power 10. So they provide the flexibility of connecting any external analog device with these pins. So these pins can read analog voltage from 4 to 5 volt. ADC is used to sample these pins so, signal and by using ADC converter they convert this analog signal to digital number between like 0 to 1023 that's 10 bit resolution right so the values uh, varies between 0 to 1023 the minimum value is 0 which means 0 volt and the maximum value is 1023 which means 5 volt. Yeah, I mistakenly said directly you can power up with uh, barrel jack. Actually, you can give up to 12 volt. Yeah, sorry for this, uh, Biju. The board supports up to 5 volt. If you want to give more volt in the sense, you can uh, use this power jack to power up your board. You can give up to 12 volt. The maximum limit is 12 volt. Okay. So now, digital pins. You can find 14 digital pins on an Arduino Uno board. Actually, they are easily recognizable from 0 to 13. So you will use digital pins to read data from some components like I am talking about sensors and write to other components. Pin can have only two state, low or high. You can consider them as binary pins. Low means 0, high means 1. So low means the voltage on the pin is 0 volt and high means 5 volt. And pulse width modulation pins. So there is six pulse width modulation pin which are mentioned here using this tilde symbol. You can use this pin just to uh, adjust the brightness of LED or you can control the speed of the motor and so on. And you pin 0 1 1. So zeroth pin which is for receiver and first pin is for transmitter. So these pins used for serial communication. So the transmitter is used for transmitting the data and receiver is used for receiving the data. It's also represents the successful flow of data.
and then SPI pins. 10, 11, 12, 13, these four pins are corresponded to SPI pins, which is for, uh, which, uh, SPI means serial peripheral interface. MOSI pin, MISO pin, chip select pin or uh, slave select pin and uh, this clock pin. Mo, uh, MISO means master input, slave output and this means master output, slave input. And then I2C pin. You can use these two pins also as I2C pin and also you can go for this A4 and A5. A4 is for clock pin, A5 is for data pin. You can also use these two pins as I2C pins. It's a two-wire serial communication protocol. And now let's see Arduino Uno's features. So the first one is more frequency and number of instructions per cycle. So Atmega 328 microcontroller is placed on the board that comes with the number of features like timers, counters, interrupts, pulse modulation, crystal oscillator that helps in producing more frequency and number of instructions per cycle, right? And built-in regulation feature which keeps the voltage under control when the device is actually connected to the external device. Flexibility and ease of use. So there are 14 input output digital pins and 6 analog pins which is incorporated in the board itself that allow the external connection with any circuit with the board. So these pins provide the flexibility and ease of use to the external devices that can be connected through these pins. And configurable pins. So six analog pins are marked as A0 to A5 and come with the resolution of 10 bits. So these pins measure from 0 volt to 5 volt. And quick start. So reset pin is available in the board that reset the whole board and takes the uh, running program in the initial stage. So this pin is useful when board hang ups in the middle of the running program like pushing this pin will clear everything up in the program and start the program right from the beginning and low voltage requirement. So only 5 volt is required to turn the board on which can be achieved directly using USB port or external adapter like that. And plug and play. So there is no hard and fast interface required to connect the devices to the board. Simply uh, you just plug the external device into the pins of the board and that are laid out on the board in the form of header. And then USB interface. So Arduino Uno comes with USB interface that is USB port is added on the board to develop serial communication with the computer. And then power alternatives. So apart from USB, battery or like uh, AC to DC adapter can also be used to power this board. And now the main thing, installation process. How to install Arduino IDE? Okay. So for that, let me go for the official site. You have to search for Arduino IDE download. So see, this is uh, Arduino's official site. You can go for it. And here it will show like Windows, Linux, Mac OS. You can download it according to your need. So here I'm using only Windows. Click on this Windows 10 and your 64 bit. And here it will uh, pop up like a contribution window. This will appear. You have to just click just download. And here you need to click just download. And it will ask for a path. And you can go for wherever you want to store it. And you can get, click save. If I click like this in the sense it will start download. I have already downloaded ID in my uh, PC. So if you don't have ID in the sense you can go for it. Just download it. After downloading it, it will ask for some permissions. You just have to click I agree, I agree and next like that. At last it will ask like successfully downloaded and you can close it. Again open your IDE. If you are opening your ID in the sense, it will pop up like this. That's it. You just go for Google and search for the name. Click download and it will ask for some uh, license so that's uh, that's why you have to give I agree install next like that button and at last close your uh, 
ID and open it again, it will pop up like this. It will defaultly have all these things, void setup function, void loop function, your ID will look like this page. So now let me explain about this. See, there is a toolbar, tool button. So, the icons displayed on the toolbar are like verify, upload, these things. These are used to do verify R. Let me go for the, this one. This is updated version. See. See here. This is the toolbar. It, it will have verify button, upload button, new button. This is for new and this is for save. And at last it will have like serial monitor. So the serial monitor button is pressed in the sense. We can see the output here using this and this is the menu bar and this it will show you our the ID version, the file name here we have to write our code and here it will uh, pop up uh, with the, um, it like if we upload our code in the sense it will pop up here like this, it's uploading, it's verifying and if you have any error in your code in the sense it will print all the errors, everything in this box and at last if you are connecting your Arduino Uno board into your PC in the sense it will pop up here like this your board name your port name everything it will print in this box so this is how our Arduino ID will look like okay so now basic commands let's discuss about basic commands so Arduino programs can be divided in actually three parts. First one is structure, second one is values which mean variables and constants and third one is function. Let us start with the structure. So software uh, structure consists of two main functions. One is setup function and another one is loop function. So what is the purpose of setup? So the setup function is called when a sketch starts. So it is used to do initialize the variable, the pin modes we are using, libraries, I mean uh, st uh, start using libraries. The setup function will run only once after each power up or reset of the Arduino board. And then void loop. So the loop contains statements that are executed repeatedly. If you want to do some repeated things in the sense, you can drop all these commands inside the loop function. It will continuously run until you power off your board. So the section of, a section of code inside the curly brackets is repeated depending on the value of variables. So the delay function is a blocking function to pass a program from doing task during the specified duration in milliseconds. So this is the syntax delay of milliseconds. Inside you have to pass seconds in milliseconds. So if I want to pass my program for one second in the sense, I can go for 1000 milliseconds. 1000 milliseconds is equal to one second, right? We can adjust the timing according to our need. And then pin mode. So the specific pin number is set as the input or output. It's mode. So if I'm taking 12th pin in the sense, I'm going to set its mode, whether it is input or output. So the pin means the pin number, we can select the pin number according to the requirement. And mode, we can set the mode as input or output according to the corresponding pin we are using. Now digital write. Here I actually I have to suppose to give like pin. I mistakenly written as pi. Sorry. So the digital write function is used to write high or low. So if the pin has been configured as an output with the pin mode in the sense, its voltage will be set to the corresponding value like 5 volt for high and 0 volt for low. So if the pin is configured as an input in the sense, using this digital write, this will enable the high or disable the low, the internal pulled up on the input pin. So if you don't set the pin mode to output, and connect the LED to a pin when calling digital red high in the sense, the LED may appear dim. So we have to give accordingly. 
So this is the syntax. Inside we need to pass our pin first. Then we need to give the value whether it is high or low. Now digital read. So digital read command is used in Arduino for reading the status of digital pins on Arduino. So when we want to read whether uh, the digital pin of Arduino is high or low, we use this digital read command. So this is the syntax. First we need to pass the data type and then we need to create a variable and using this digital read we are going to uh, read that particular uh, pin. If I am going to use any digital sensor in the sense, I am going to connect that particular sensor uh, with this 8th pin. So I am going to read that pin. I am going to store it in a variable which data type is integer. And then analog read. So the analog read is a command mainly used to program the pins on the board. If you are using analog read function means it indicates you are making the pins as input. If you are getting input in the sense you have to read that right. So if you are mentioning input in the sense itself in the uh, we can get to know that we are definitely going to read something from that component. So we can go for this read function. That is you can connect the Arduino analog pins with any sensor and read its value by making this analog read function. So analog pins are different than digital uh, pin like a digital pin can store only two values high and low while analog pin can store any random value just from 0 to 1023. So the same thing here we need to give like a uh, data type variable name and using analog read we can read that particular pin and we can store it in a variable. And at last there is a thing called analog write. So the analog Right, Arduino command is used to update the status of analog pins and also used to address the pulse width modulation pins on the board. So the analog write comes handy when you plan to control the uh, like motor speed or intensity of LED. The value you write on the pulse width modulation pins will control the speed. For example, if you intend to run the motor at full speed in the sense, you will set the value. For example, I am giving 255, the maximum value. It can handle that will ultimately run the motor at full speed. So this is the syntax. Analog write inside you have to pass that uh, pin number and integer value. You can give between 0 to the, uh, sorry uh, 255. So this is all about introduction to Arduino session. So now this is the right chance to convert this master class into a certified internship. So in this one month internship, you will get 90 days access to complete records of the session, 30 days of uh, internship certificate. You can download all the presentations file. You will get 8 plus project source code for download. And for every week, you will have mastermind session. And there is a particular group for internship members. And you will get access to Panta community. And as well as there is a career guidance sessions also. So we have included some projects in this internship which are soil moisture control, street, uh, smart street light monitoring, water quality monitoring, smart parking using Arduino, health monitoring, smart circuit breaker using Arduino, ATM security using Arduino, vehicle speed controller and as well as surveillance system using Arduino. So this one month internship is just for 699. Use this link to make your payment. Also, there is a three-month internship on embedded system. The lines up are Arduino, Raspberry Pi, Internet of Things and as well as PCP. This is only for 1 to double nine. And in this three-month internship, you will get 360 days access to complete records. You will get uh, three individual certificates. You can download all the presentation files and you can download 18 plus source code. For every week, you will have mastermind session. And there is a separate group for internship members and you will get access to Pantech community and also career guidance sessions. And this is just for 1299. Make this chance and use this link to make your payment. So if you have any queries in the sense, you can go for these numbers and clear your doubts with our coordinators. Thank you all. Have a very nice day.